Hello there everyone and welcome back. We had some real good stomp in the last episode and I'm itching to do a little bit more. But unfortunately, I think this might be the last episode I'll do of Orcs here because like I said in the first episode, coming back to them, I tend to get bored of them really quickly despite how much fun they can be with the potential of the tractor can just, what is it, ramming my opponent's ships together or just pushing my ships around there. There's a lot of fun to be had and never mind the simplicity of just getting massive damage and almost guaranteed critical hits with these mega cans. They are absurdly fun, but I tire of them really quickly there, especially with the episode where I had nothing but what seemed like orc mirror matches. That can get a little uninteresting. It's completely random at least, so there is always that, but I am itching to try and maybe figure out a little bit more if I am so lucky to get in our orc mirror match. But the diversity is a lot more enjoyable, so let's see what happens. Alright then, it looks like we're going to be doing a convoy against Blue. I'm the defender no less, so I think I'm going to keep the convoy back. I don't think Blue is going to be using Novacans, but keeping him back, keep him safe, and force him to basically run through. My Orc fleet's probably the right strategy. Do I take the Death Dealer for this though? It does offer me like a second uh, Mega Can. I just don't like the turn radius potential. But I do have a micro warp jump at the same time. I was I just know. I was robbed from the experience because of the station blowing up there before. And I don't want to repeat that if at all possible. It's only 200 extra health too. I like having the damage or the health fee spread out a little bit too. So we'll stick with the hammers. Get the bashes in on this. And I can throw in a tear. And a couple of frigates for good measure. I think it's only two frigates though. But at least it can serve as a bit of bait. If I use them right, maybe they could be a distraction, they could be a bait. Highly unlikely, but we'll see what happens, considering it is a convoy after all. So I'm not against buying myself a little bit of time if I use those savages strictly as a deterrent. Or at least force them to go where I want them to go. Since Blue may be considering just dive bombing the conveyors if they look appealing enough. That's going to be a trick though, what's the map layout going to be like? If I have gas clouds, if I have asteroid belts, that makes it easy for me to conceal these things some, but if there's only like one, maybe two, then that narrows down where I can hide immensely. And so far we get absolutely nothing, which I'm sort of okay with. How do we best perform a ruse though, with that said? How is the best ruse, or at least make Blue second guess where everything is at? Because I want the savages to also be able to contribute. It's unlikely that's going to happen. So the smart idea would probably have most of the conveyors in back here, but not so close that a Novacan might cause trouble. We will see. Hmm. And I could just rotate these things easily enough and start moving around. They don't have to move or do anything just yet. And I have two more conveyors to start getting aggressive. I might poke forward with them aggressive, like I said. Probably just those two though. Because I am... I do want to make sure I don't lose any of... My savages, or well, not my savages, but too many of the conveyors, since that's going to be a bit of a tr problem. And I'm going to assume Blue's going to go top heavy, maybe. Either way, let's get these conveyors going. I'm going to have to watch them like a hawk, and then get them turned around if necessary. So this you looks as top heavy out. as it can be. That's no surprise. So let's get these moving, let's get these spread out, and see what Blue does. I gotta be mindful of torpedoes with that said. It's gonna be tricky to do considering after all I don't have really the best of mobility on these things. But at least these two are safe and I think this bash is just gonna go straight through the middle. Turn. Let's see. I'm gonna take two torpedo hits, now it's three. I did block one though. And the fire assault's a bit of a pain. Do I go super aggressive? I can, since you're trying to turn around. Okay, you're, if I can catch him while he's spread out, that's going to be great. I'm okay with that some. Let's just go super aggressive in that case. Let's reveal everything, keep these moving. Keep the conveyors on the move. The more he's spread out, the better. And since he's kind of turned on the side, that's kind of okay too. Fire everything got. That was a bad mistake there. I thought I had beakers on hand. 
And I have Brace for Impact to help mitigate this a lot. Mitigate as much as I can. Watch for potential torpedo shots is the main thing. Yeah. No, you are not fl flying there. As much as I want to avoid that. Keep on moving. Keep making this difficult for him. I gotta be mindful of flying inside. What is it? Be careful of that thing. Be careful of one cruiser being on my flank. It's obviously an overlord. That's no surprise at all. But I got another brace for impact. Let's go. Let's get going. It's gonna be tricky because of my sides. And I do have beacons, but I don't think that's relevant just yet. Ah, uh, that's a shame. I was hoping to kind of push that a little bit further. Alright, just hold that thought a moment. Sadly, that did not pay off to my liking. And that was the wrong one I was prepared with, too. Either way. Gotta keep an eye. Mike Warp Jump's gonna be available in a moment. Now, yeah, let's just maximize our damage best we can. As everything gets moving. Alright. I could dodge, take a single torpedo hit. Just gotta make this as difficult as possible. This should be simple, in theory. Just gotta be mindful of the brace for impact potential. Oh, I, I was getting weird up by the track chance why that didn't seem like it was working the best. Now I know why. Well, no, I don't actually. I want to push my own ship out of the way. Keep on going. This thing's about to explode. Hold up. So let it explode, I guess. His shields came up at a bad time, though. So it's a little unfortunate. So that cruiser's gone. We're gonna jump with all these. And I have repairs already up for that, unfortunately. But... There is weird latency I'm noticing, though. So why is that, I wonder? Exactly. It doesn't matter at this point. Because we're gonna get on in there. This is just gonna be one cruiser out in the middle of nowhere. So get everything reorganized, get them moving, and be mindful of my brace for impact. Also, keep this thing forward. Keep it as far forward as possible. So that way everything can shoot at this thing. Although I'm not going to have a brace for impact anytime soon. So this thing may still die, but I have enough make cans to kind of justify it. I just need them all to contribute and join in now. So get on moving. This should be simple as can be. I just got to kill this thing now. Come on, you know you want to. I may still lose this basher with that said, if I don't kill him right now. Especially if his shield's back up. Alright, just ram it. I'm gonna lose both my ships in the process. Small Constellation Prize. Now, how's this gonna work out with the ramming? No, you're not running away, I'm afraid to say. Not happening, but all we have to deal with is an Overlord now. So just get the push on out. We should potentially win this, since only one frigate's actually gone. And he shot at the Savage, which I'm kind of okay with. Everything else kind of needs to reposition. Actually, let's make this easy for the Savage to potentially dodge. I do have time to repair. I have time to get my ores back up. So I will be in good position. Okay, I misjudged where torpedoes were going. But I do have brace for impact for this. Actually, no, I don't have a brace. I used the tracked can already, so that was a bit of a mistake. Brace for impact paid off immensely there, though. If nothing else, that paid off immensely. Now get everything going. And am I missing a conveyor? Yes, I am. He never killed the one that was way down here. So this could still go good for me. I just gotta wait. What, a few seconds? Alright. Judge where these torpedoes are going. Get these going, get these out of the way, and ideally not get hit by these torpedoes, which is going to be tricky to do. I'm still waiting for a timer to cool down. Nope, I still get hit, but I do have repairs up at least. And I still have a beacon? No. One, one of my uh, ships that were destroyed was a bash or hammer. So it's not going to happen here yet. And I have... 
Let me just boost this out of the way. I don't care about ramming it, I just want to board it. And I got a perfect broadside salvo too with that said. Just gotta make sure... Yeah, unfortunately I'm gonna suffer heavy losses, but I should be able to do damage. That brace for impact was amazing for him though. Since it was on the prow after all, even though that wasn't bonker big mech. Prow's gone, so you have no torpedoes. And I do have my brace for impact on my own. Just gotta ram in the ideal position and maximize damage. Which isn't gonna be here. But I do want that to catch, actually do more damage. And I... Doesn't have a micro warp jump, so... Augur Shrupter means little in this regard. Just keep shooting it, keep killing it. Do what you can, and we're gonna deny ourselves him a ram attempt, ideally, too. If he tries to do anything sneaky. Alright, just ram it. Is that possible? No, I misjudged. I misjudged. I could potentially kill, so the conveyors are still on the move, regardless. Or they were, anyway. I hope I can keep these ships alive, although I still have a micro warp jump. So it tells me. I think that bugged out. I think that's lying to us a little bit. So, that was a bit of a weird match. Well, not really, but it was definitely felt like it dragged on quite slowly. Since there wasn't really a lot for me to do in all seriousness. I just stood there and basically waited until my Mega Cans did the damage they needed to. So it was really weird in that sense. If I got them more aggressive with the Rams, maybe it would have been more enjoyable, but at the same time, the risk of ramming, even if I were to hit them, it means my Bashes, my Cruisers are so out of position they easily get shot in the rear, which is why I don't do that more often than not. But as you saw, it was great for me getting distance or closing distance and catching up to them. That's where it was really beneficial, so that way I can close the gap, even though technically maybe I shouldn't have boosted as early as I did the first time. But Blue was already spraying out his ships there, so it felt justified at the time. Only thing, the real question, should I have commit all my ships to one cruiser? Again, the concern there is I leave myself so vulnerable to the rear, because this is the only faction, the Orcs, that have 25 armor on the rear, and if I'm just going to stand there and float, there, with no easy means to turn my side, then I'm leaving myself really vulnerable to a lot of damage potential. Hard to say. Wasn't really an exciting match, though. Well, it looks like we're gonna fight up against Solari now. I think I'm being targeted again, I'm afraid to say, after that last match where it was nothing but orcs. Or last video, rather. So, do I really want to bring the Death DL again? I, f I don't like top heavy kind of setup, especially since the extra tractor cans are so convenient to have, especially if Solari is gonna commit to the Custodian. It might be warranted since this thing can be a liability with its slower speed. Never mind the chance that it has for its engines to suffer a critical hit because of the turbo boost does. I would love to get this thing some experience, it feels awkward. Maybe I should bite the bullet and just commit to it anyway, with that all said. But I want extra ships, I want ex the frigates to kind of help with point defense since I have that convenience and I don't need Nova Cans for this. How many frigates do I want? It looks like I get five, and I do have additional point defense, which will help against mean builds or the only builds. Huh. I kind of disagree, but whatever satisfies you, I guess. Whatever satisfies you. Don't worry, soon enough you'll have six other fleets to play with in Armada 2 to look for your meme fleets. But meme fleets can only go so far, I'm afraid to say. This should be interesting. Since I have amazing damage potential, so long as I can deny the mic warp jump in these tractor cans, at least against the Custodian, are going to be amazing. Since that Custodian does, after all, cost 400 points. So, if isolating that and killing it really quick helps me a ton. Also, I should back up these damn ships so that way I'm able to fit my frigates in the openings there up front to kind of use them for point defense screen. I just got to group everything though. That's the only thing to make my life a little bit easier. This is how I normally do it with the orcs, because I hate... Well, if things go badly, you can imagine the repair bill is going to be ridiculous for... Trying to repair six, possibly seven cruisers if I feel enough light cruisers. I'm not sure if that's even possible. 
I never did the math in my head, but considering that light cruisers cost like, can potentially cost like 80 points with just the Mega Cam variant, it is possible maybe to get like 7 cruisers in. This is a horrible spot to deploy with that said. I'm just realizing. Maybe I go on Ark? Let me fix this. Let me fix this properly. They're already grouped up. I just wish there was a faster way to redeploy them. Since doing this one at a time can get a little tedious, needless to say. But I wasn't really looking at the map to be fair either, so... Let's try this again. Make sure I have room to fit everything. Also, my light cruiser is in a bad spot, so let's correct that. Alright, now that I'm all set, let's get the frigates in place. If nothing else, they serve as a good deterrent for, for the bombers. That is the one thing I can hope for them. Let's get this going. Oh, so... This looks like Dalos and a Custodian, if I had to guess? Nope, three Dalos, maybe. The points would kind of line up decently for it. Oh well, it'll be something different. I don't know how exciting it's going to be with that all said. Let me do the math, though, because there's always a stealth alloy ship potentials. Four, eight, eleven, yep. That's all of them right there. Yeah, we kind of already know what we're feeling to a vague extent. It's just a question of favors, possible upgrades. Anything else that could be an issue. <laughs> Don't plead ignorance to me. Remember, you're the infamous person that's been kiting me all day and trying to cheese out the clock with your stealth alloy shenanigans. I'm not fooled. Oh my, the truth is known. Well, it wasn't really one ship versus the entire fleet. He hid like a Dalif with staff alloy and two frigates. Although, depending how you look at it, that is technically one ship, isn't it? Oh uh, well. That's a bit of history I hope to keep put behind me there. I wasn't really fond of that, despite how it may seem. Can you really blame me? I was on the receiving end of it. It may be hilarious. The idea may be potentially hilarious for those who may have watched that. But I don't know. I don't think I was too fond of it. It was interesting learning to fight Tau with my Imperial Navy fleet since all the other Tau's up to before encountering Solari and Fossil, was it? Were pretty much stomps. Nothing all that exciting. I'm afraid to say. So, but it was a good learning experience for me if nothing else. Considering I kind of was going to ranked mode sort of blind. And now everything's burnt out. Let me just make sure- oh, he's got Nikasar. This will be amusing. Because I got Brace for Impact, which will help with this immensely. I just gotta make sure to targeting properly. Make sure to shoot at the right ships and actually... Let me just track them around. Have them ram each other really nicely. Although in truth, I should be trying to ram what I want to kill. That would make the most sense. Because there goes my belt armor in a hurry. So everything should brace just in case. Although shields... I should have waited until the shields went down in all seriousness. That would make the most sense. And don't bug out on me. This shouldn't be too difficult. But the bombers are always a scare. They're always a scare. And I want to make sure I board and kill everything. Because these things will die fast once the mega cans start hitting. But the mega cans need to hit first. Can I actually get a micro warp jump in there? Oh, that was Graviton projection. Oh, he has four cruisers, interestingly enough. I still have Mike warp jump at least. To get in close, I just gotta burn all his uh, projectors though for that to really matter. Because apparently I can't micro warp jump anywhere convenient. There goes the third one. Now. Can we get in there? He is trying to turn and I gotta make sure I do damage to everything. This... Well, this is convenient. I'm taking a lot of railgun fire though, so gotta make this count quickly. Make this count quickly. I thought I tracked a can. Did it not track the can? No, it did not. Yeah, he's doing that. Like, sp lots of Nikasar summons. Which could still work. What about Mike Warp Jump? Oh yeah, it's just the Graviton projections, so... Not a big deal just yet. 
the sooner we kill these cruisers, the better, because they're what's the weak link here. Or they're the, what's going to cause all the problems, with that said. Come on, tractor can't stop failing me, you cursed thing. It feels like the tractor can't fail me, at least. Either way, let's finish this off. I should get these out of the way. I should mic warp jump this out. I want my levels. Although technically I have no generator, so it doesn't really matter too much just yet. And I was wondering why my beacon wasn't uh, auto casting. That explains it. Just ram and kill. This is gonna get silly. Do I? Okay, that's insubordinating. That will probably die in a moment. And there goes all his Nikasar, so at least the uh, Bonker Big Mac was actually useful in this regard. I'm still sad this thing destroyed, though. Or got destroyed. Uh, I didn't get to finish off what I wanted to type. I want to pl plot him for his all the DACA he was contributing. Oh well, that was a silly match needless to say, but I do get my experience at least, and it did have potential to be scary because, again, what Solari was trying to utilize is there is upgrades that allow your point defense to actually do damage to capital ships. Once they're within range, the main trick, the main thing to keep an eye on doing that kind of strategy though is that it's mitigate by armor. And what are the perfect ships to kind of get punished by that type of play? The orcs, definitely, without a doubt. Since I need to get in range, which which his point defense is easily going to be able to shoot at me when you consider Tau also have an upgrade to extend the range of their point defense to 3,000 units as opposed to, what is it, 1,250, is it? So yeah, they actually can do a lot of damage there. I don't know if it actually hits all my ships, though. That's the one thing, well, since I never played with it, actually does damage evenly to everything. Still, there was some merit to that, at least against... Ooh, excuse me. At least against the orcs, because again, the cruisers are the big threat, because they have so many railguns, especially when they're on my side and rear. They could do a ridiculous amount of damage. Hell, the Nikasar could do a surprising amount of damage too, because their railguns are surprisingly potent. They're single weapons, mind you. They only have one twin railgun battery on each side but it can do a lot of damage it's a surprising amount of damage for at least an individual frigate when you start including the fact that there's like eight nikasar six i don't know how many nikasar there was all i know there were four cruisers so yeah so one of them was not a deal if i want to say at least because that would justify a messenger and all the other nikasar he kind of fielded it a little bit nonetheless there is merit to that at least against the orcs and it was scary for a moment since I kind of did not want to fight the Nikasar since they would draw out so much time unless I ran them. But again, I kind of burnt my boosters and it's so easy for Nikasar to actually dodge. Since the Nikasar have 50 degree turning radius and that's not even including their high energy turn. So they have the easiest time to dodge a cruiser if Solare was willing to put the time into it. Okay, 250 point Tau. This could be scary, just because of the sheer potential to railguns, hell. We've seen the potential already with Solar Ray's kind of weird little, uh, what is it, four light cruisers and a bunch of Nikasar down? This is pretty much more the same, although my opponent's gonna have 330 points about, so that could very easily feel like three light cruisers, three Saucés, if they're feeling though all three of them as Saucés. Although... Thankfully, if they have Daylifts or Borkons, that's not so much an issue, so fingers crossed that's the case. Do I actually go with a tear? The hit points are kind of warranted. I like the firepower, especially if I can get on the flank. How would that line up? Because I certainly would not... If I go with a cruiser, I could possibly afford uh, a frigate. So that's an idea too, although it's not really much different firepower, which is why I don't like that idea. I like the firepower, and it gives me better flanking potential, potentially, and extra point defense is useful for heavy seeker missiles if my adversary is using beacons and I'm inconveniently get spot by the, the recon prober, was it? I forget what the, the one you shoot out that moves in at 600 units, was it, 600, 
excuse me, 600 youth speed. I forget what exactly that's called that moves across the map. If I, if I get spied by that, I'm going to want the extra point defense to kind of help alleviate and mitigate that a lot. Which means I should have a tight formation with that said. At least to make those point defenses a little more reliable, a little more consistent for all my ships to contribute. So I'm going to do a very tight formation as the plan. And I'm going to try and get really aggressive. Since I don't really have much choice, and thankfully, with my opponent only having like the same speed as I do, since there should be no way for him to have an air catch favor on any cruisers, I should be able to get on top of him relatively quickly. Although I will withhold my track cans if it deems necessary, although again, I'm dealing with possibly, well, six ships means it's not really th three light cruisers, so I'm thankful for that. It could very easily be two Dalos and two Borkons, so though. The points potentially do line up that way. I'm going to have to watch and see, and we're just going to go straight in aggressively. Tight formation in case I get spotted, and... All I could tell is maybe there are five frigates in one single cruiser? Maybe? Unless these are both cruisers in the middle. It's going to be really hard to tell. Aside from the fact that maybe the Wardens are go at 188 unit speed, but with him zigzagging like he is, it's actually, he's conveniently making it really difficult for me to tell the speed difference. Whereas if they were moving like I'm currently doing, the Wardens would eventually pull on ahead and I'd be able to get a read off that way. I'm not getting that convenience though, not this time. And I want to make sure I don't get flanked. I don't want to get hit on the side, ideally. So I think I'm going to try and circle around straight sideways and look for an opportunity. I want to minimize the chance of getting flanked. Whether it's for secret missiles or just the sheer firepower the railguns can contribute. So I think my plan is to go to this gas cloud here, do a hard turn and boost on forward, depending on what his position looks like when I get there. I'm just going to make sure I don't give him free damage by flying through this asteroid belt inconveniently. And of course, avoid getting hit by these mines. Although, I do believe with the 75 armor on the prow of my savages, they'll actually survive the mine blast. So, I don't think I have to worry too much there. And I want to avoid boosting because again, seeker missiles are a concern and I'm not seeing any indication of seeker missiles just yet. And I... At least this puts me relatively close to this gas cloud to also utilize it to my advantage. So I like that idea if I he suicides a frigate in, mind you. Which is looking like a possibility. I'll take my time. I do need to conceal myself as much as possible, especially if my opponent's going to try and run from me and kite. Since I don't have a... Well, if I'm going to withhold... Hmm. So we got a messenger. Does not have extended range, sensors, it has no upgrades, although he won't until I, He won't actually get to spot me until Admiral level 3 with a frigate upgrade. Now, savages, get on in there and start causing some mayhem. I'm okay with these things taking shots. I could easily boost on out. Okay, he revealed everything, that's fine. That just means we could turn and fire and start engaging. These heavy guns should be, make short work of this messenger. They just got a hit. That's the catch. And I'm still waiting for seeker missiles. I'm not seeing any seeker missiles just yet. Interestingly enough. There, that messenger's gone. I gotta be mindful of flanks. Okay, so this tells me we got two cruisers right here. Full speed ahead, let's get on aggressive. Well, actually, I'm probably completely wrong in that case. I was kind of misreading the cannon shots a little bit. That at least is gone. That's one ship gone. And sadly, the cruiser is going to be easy pickings here. The strategy was sound, but... I, he had a Borkon, he did not fire seeker missiles. So that's a bit of a shame. That could have actually willed me down quite a bit. And I accidentally locked on, which is not what I want to do. But I'm sorry, I don't think this thing's going to live very long if those Mega Cans actually hit. Especially with guaranteed critical hits at that. I don't want to commit too I don't want to murder him too quickly. Although I may not have a choice. Since he could warp out if he want- Wow! That was fast. Was that insubordination or did he try to kill me? I can feel bad for him there because that was immediate. I think I got two hull breaches on him, which basically meant my Mega Can 2 shot his cruisers. That, for a new player, must be demoralizing. 
I can understand why it would seem that way. Because it seemed like he didn't even have a chance with you how quickly... Well, not really quickly, but how simply I can kill those things. Just you two shots bash. seemed like was all I needed. Ah, oh, well. It had possibility to be really frightening. But my opponent did not take my ships very seriously. Hopefully, they can learn for a next attempt. If they're not demoralized enough, that is. I feel bad. That is not what you want. I can understand the arguments for orcs being overpowered now. At least after that display. Ah uh, well, orcs gotta do what an orcs gotta do. And with 75 armor, he could have took me on head on, especially with a brace for impact. It would not have been a good situation, mind you. I think he seriously should have hanged back, since he did have 9,000 range on his railguns. Never mind, the Castellans also had 9,000 range on their railguns, so... He could have softened me up and he had a lot of Seeker missiles which he never utilized. Not until I was already on top of him, too. So, it's without a doubt a newer player. Which demonstrates when Armada 2 is out and everyone has the same fleet strength, everyone has... Every, all the ships unlocked with the same number of upgrades, it's going to show the skill difference, I think. Because I feel like I'm still going to have matches like that where my opponents don't know what the hell they're doing. Okay, I think I'm going to throw him a bone a little bit. I was tempted maybe to go with the bashes, because the torpedoes would be a nice dynamic. But, Novikans would easily, easily deal with the frigate problem, which would result in us having more of the same. Let's have some fun here. Do I go with all brutes? It would be a challenge, but it would be amazing for the frigates. Do I dare make the attempt? This is going to be silly. This will require a lot of precision control and we'll finally see the turbo boosters blow up my own frigates. Potentially. And the points line up almost perfectly, too. I really was tempted to go with the... What is it? The Bad Moons? The Novacans? But... Like I said, if he's going to feel frigates again, that's going to be an incredibly one-side bout. Although this will be a fun strategy, it could end badly for him still since these things do notable amount of ram damage when you consider they have 75 armor. And they're going to be amazing against the frigates if I can hit them. And also, my, I'm not quite censored. Let's fix that some. This is going to be drastically different. I'm excited to see how it plays out. So, Brutes are grouped. Actually, let me group them two and three. This is normally how I group them. Group two is normally on the left, group three is on the right. Group one's normally in the middle, unless I deem it some otherwise. Which, in the case of me doing a serious fleet composition, with like five frigates in front, five cruisers behind them, it would just be one and two, simply put. And I like the formation, especially if I give them additional point defense, because arguably, if they're a tight enough formation, there's... Maybe just as many, if not more, point defense than all the other factions, unless they get the upgrades well to increase their point defense numbers. Since after all, all my ships are so much more cheaper, which does help make make up for the effect or the trait that they all my ships have less point defense in general. And I don't even think yeah, the brutes are like the cheapest frigates I have to offer, so they would have already had three point defense on them to begin with. But I'm interested to see how this plays out. Six ships, so it's pretty much the same as before. And what the hell? Oh, that's a messenger. There's something I didn't know. There's a visual indicator for the messenger, if I had to guess. There's something I didn't know. And I am not daring the boost right away, because even though my adversary does not, or did not, use the seeker missiles to the best of their ability, does not mean that's going to change, and it's not smart tactics, even if this is a silly strategy. And... This is a perfect example what I was talking about last match of this, figuring out which ship was which. Because these brutes are clearly obviously frigates, as opposed to my cruiser in the middle. Where this one's trying to play more position oriented, I am probably going to overwhelm them to death though, trying to micromanage this. Because these brutes are a serious scare. I don't even think I need to use my boosters to ram them, or get a killing blow for ram. But I do need to be mindful of that. Because these things will die fast if they're shot on the side. So, let's let's get ourselves a nice flank and surround position with that said. I'm going to look for that opportunity at least. We're going to overwhelm them. We're going to have a little bit of fun here. I'm not relying on sheer firepower anymore. We're going with brute strength. 
Which you would argue more often than not, it's the same thing, right? You would argue anyway. In this case, brute strength literally means trying to ram him to death. Do I seriously consider turning off holding fire on my Basha? Well, I need something to actually do damage, especially if the ramps go badly. So let's not get too carried away. And thankfully you're boosting away, so maybe I can hit with sap cans to give you a bit of a scare. It's not going to be for a while, though. It's not going to be for a while. I just want to make sure these frigates are not easily picked off at the same time, too. Because it looks like he has good positional awareness, just not how to utilize his ships to the best of his abilities. Okay, now I think it's time to start with the attack order. We're going to have one wild card here to try and pick off whatever I m maybe don't get a chance to kill. The Basha is going to get ready to do its bashing. We're going to turn. Oh, I saw. Oh, I lost vision. That's what happened. Okay. That's fine. I didn't think this through, did I? Oh well. He's just delaying the inevitable. And soon this Basha is going to get caught up too, which is a nice convenient for me. I was kind of worried that he would try and snipe these things before my Basha could get into the fray. Nope. Basha is going to draw all the fire, I think. I'm half tempted to boost it right now. With that said, let's go on in and give him a good scare. See what his response is. And now I gotta make sure these frigates are dealt with appropriately. And these things got more speed than most of the Tau frigates, surprisingly enough. So they should be alright, I gotta make sure the 75 armor is soaking the damage. I do not ever want the 25 armor to take that railgun fire, ideally. And maybe this brute will actually murder something. Oh, let's time to boost on in, because the control is not the most convenient, is it? I'm sorry, Warrens, you are decimated. There, can we bash one more? Not quite. I should have braced for impact, that might have been a smart idea. Now, how can I ram this thing? I guess, that's how. And that was a bad guess. I did hit it, but with the 25 armor. And now I'm gonna kill my own ships. My ships are blowing each other up. It's glorious, but not so much so. Oh well, I still got boosters, right? Yep, I have boosters. Let's try and ram these Castellans, because I think what saved him is the attack priority. I don't think he's actually turning them. I think it's the convenience of the attack priority t making them brace or turn their side. And that was an amazing hit there. Now, it's a little annoying that these things decide to stop when they're strictly for ramming. But that's the attack priority in effect, like I said. Now this is dead. One more time. Let's ram, let's kill this thing because it's about to burn to death. And I think I just got a critical hit on my engines anyway, since I don't think that fire assault was from the railguns. I am missing my bashes really badly though. Now, kill the Castellan. Kill the Castellan. Well, it's on fire, that's close enough to killing the Castellan, right? I could micro warp jump out of the way. I don't think I'm gonna dodge the bombers in time. Nope, not fast enough. Alas. I did mitigate a lot of the damage though with that said. Now, can I ram? Give me one glorious ram for this crippled uh, brute. It's on fire. I I killed it. It killed itself. Hit ram the ship. There we go. 100 points. I'm not All right, time to turn off the mega cans. We're going in brute force style. Push him out of bounds. Push him out of bounds. Uh He didn't warp it out sadly. It was a silly match, but I think the AI, the pathing, saved him more than the skill of my opponent, though. Because again, the secret missiles were delayed heavily, and I really liked his strategy before to try and reveal me early on. Although, I don't think it was intentional, but I don't think he realized I could not solid run as orcs. But that was probably the best thing he could have done with the messenger in the first battle. It's just a shame he did not capitalize on the best. And he could have murdered those brutes really easily too if he knew how to 
at least take full advantage of the weak armor on the side because they were getting hit hard and I was to an extent killing myself. I just sadly did not suffer a hull breach. I had multiple fire assaults from using the boosters. So we didn't get to see the glorious explosion, although the last second ram with the brute was probably close enough. Now, I think I'm all done with Orcs Alas there, but I think I might move on over to Imperial Navy since they were tied for Orcs in the folk pole. Although at the same time, I think I only am going to do a quick handful of videos with them. We will see though. We will see.